Welcome to Null Design Channel. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to create a braided cube in Cinema 4D, demonstrated to you now. The method I will share is easy to replicate, while also providing plenty of flexibility for customization to suit your needs. Let's dive right in. Be sure the points mod and spline pen tools are activated. Enable snap and check the grid work plane option under modeling settings. Switch to the top viewport. Make sure your grid spacing value is 50 cm as in my case, so it will be easier to follow the tutorial using the same viewport grid scale. You can adjust this by using your mouse scroll wheel. Let's create the closed spline shape profile as demonstrated. Notice how useful the snapping feature is as it helps accurately place the points at the grid intersections while creating the spline. This ensures your spline aligns perfectly with the grid for precision. Make sure you see a tiny circle icon when hovering the mouse over the spline's starting point while creating the final section of the spline. It indicates that with the next left mouse click your spline will be closed. Once your spline is ready, disable the snap function to prevent unwanted snapping in subsequent steps. Now we need to round all the spline corners. To do so, select all the spline points, then right mouse click and choose the chamfer tool. Set the value of the radius field to 25 cm, which is half of the current top viewport grid spacing value. By doing this, we create a wave-like rounding of the spline corners while keeping it accurately aligned with the viewport grid. Click the apply button. To view the pivot point of the spline, which is currently not centered, make sure model mode and the move tool are activated. Center it by going to the tools menu, selecting axis, then axis center and using the default settings, left mouse clicking the execute button. Select the spline and zero its position coordinates. Now we need to add thickness to our spline to transform it into wire geometry. Parent it to the sweep object. Add a circle above the spline with the highlighted settings. Increase the angle field of the spline to 10 degrees to decrease the polygon count in the sweep object to optimize its topology better. Parent the sweep object to a cloner and rename it to Y cloners. Apply the highlighted settings to it. Make sure the PY field is set to 50 cm, which corresponds to the grid spacing value I mentioned right at the start of the tutorial. With the Y cloners cloner object selected, go to the MoGraph menu, Effector and select Plane. Make sure you are in the parameter tab of the plane effector. Adjust its settings as highlighted. Ensure that the color mode field is set to fields color, so we can see the cloners affected by the plane MoGraph effector highlighted by color. Switch to the fields tab and add a formula field. Set its formula field to the highlighted formula. This formula field checks whether the ID values of the cloners from the Y cloners are odd and applies the plane effector to those that are. As you may have noticed, the affected cloners are now highlighted in color. Add a more instance object to the scene and rename it to the cloners. Make sure you are on the object tab. Drag and drop the Y cloners object into its object reference field. Switch to the coordinates tab and apply rotation to it by utilizing the highlighted value settings. Position it as demonstrated to exclude any possibilities of scene geometry intersections. Duplicate the Z cloners more instance object and rename it to X cloners. Make sure you are on the coordinates tab to rotate it according to the highlighted setting values. Once again, integrate it into the scene as accurately as possible to prevent any geometry intersections. The braided cube is ready. The great thing about using more instance objects is that we are instancing the master Y cloners cloner object and therefore all more instance objects update instantly in relation to the master object reference. For example, if we decide to change the thickness of the wire of our whole braided cube structure, we just need to change the circle radius value in one place inside the master Y cloners cloner and the other X and Z cloners more instance objects will update accordingly. In addition, you can further experiment with the increasing complexity of your braided cube object. To do that, enhance the intricacy of the profile spline shapes as demonstrated in the reference images. By adjusting the count field of the Y cloners cloner, as well as the positions of the X and Z cloners more instance objects, you will be able to finalize the creation of your more intricate braided cube object and achieve the best result. Glad you joined me today, see you in the next tutorial.